Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com. St. Louis Public Radio. This is The Gateway. It's Wednesday, March 15th. I'm Wayne Pratt. Farmers along the Missouri River are suing the Army Corps of Engineers for management of the waterway. Many say efforts to protect endangered animals caused years of floods. I think they ought to get back to the basics and do what their job is. And I think they ought to be held accountable to people. Some say the lawsuit won't deliver policy change farmers are seeking. We'll have more on that story in just a few minutes. A group of St. Louis school parents last night calling for more investment in helping students make up for lost learning. Many have fallen behind during the pandemic. The federal stimulus package includes $120 billion for K-12 education. 20% must be spent on addressing learning loss. Parent advocacy group Bridge to Hope says the money should go toward more tutors and smaller class sizes. Crystal Barnett is the group's executive director. That means we can do things that we weren't able to do before, and we can make changes and plans that we couldn't do before. We have the means, we have the access, we have the resources, and now we just need the leadership to lean in and do it. An SLPS spokeswoman says the district cannot comment because it has not seen a proposal from the group. The number of COVID-19 cases in the St. Louis region has increased 10 percent in the last week. That's even as more people get vaccinated. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fenton reports. There have been about 400 new coronavirus cases per day over the last week in the bi-state area. Health officials in the St. Louis region say people need to make sure they don't let their guard down, even as COVID-19 vaccines become more available. Dr. Faisal Khan is director of the St. Louis County Department of Public Health. He says more contagious coronavirus variants are now prevalent throughout the region. He says until more people are vaccinated, everyone should avoid large gatherings and wear masks. We are in one of the most difficult phases of this pandemic where public patience is wearing thin, where people are increasingly skeptical and exhaustion at an emotional level is perhaps building up. About one-fifth of Missouri residents and one-fourth of Illinois residents are fully vaccinated. I'm Sarah Fenton, St. Louis Public Radio. As Illinois prisons prepare to allow in-person visitation once again, a Department of Corrections spokesperson says the system has done well managing COVID-19. Lindsay Hess says the department expects vaccinations to keep increasing in the coming weeks. Overall, it's gone it's gone very well, especially considering that this is unprecedented, nothing that we've ever seen before. Information from the Marshall Project shows nearly 90 prisoners in Illinois have died from COVID-19 over the last year. Illinois prisons will have a phased rollout of in-person visitations over the next few weeks. Hess says facilities will reopen for visitation three weeks after inmates receive the second dose of the vaccine. St. Louis Crisis Nursery has changed how it supports families during the pandemic, especially those hurting during one of the worst years for gun violence in St. Louis history. St. Louis Public Radio's Kayla Drake reports. 2020 broke records for gun violence in St. Louis. 260 people were killed. Of those, 17 were children. After each child homicide, St. Louis Crisis Nursery staff come to the neighborhood where it happened and deliver flyers to people's homes about their child care and trauma support services. For over 30 years, the nonprofit nursery has been assisting parents struggling with stress. The nursery's clinical director, Molly Brown, said on St. Louis on the Air Wednesday that families felt more isolated during the pandemic. It's so important to us that those communities know that they're cared about, that those kids' lives mattered, and that those kiddos are cared about, and that hope exists and help exists. Brown says the nursery offers free medical checkups and virtual appointments with social workers. I'm Keila Drake, St. Louis Public Radio. Farmers along the Missouri River are suing the Army Corps of Engineers for property damage due to flooding. Farmers and environmentalists have fought for years over whether the government should prioritize the river's endangered animals or human interests. As Harvest Public Media's Christina Stella reports, some say it's not clear who is winning the battle for the river known as the Big Muddy. 
After the catastrophic floods of 2019, Mike Bean's 680 acres of Missouri River farmland became a kind of museum. Refrigerators, buoys, and an aquarium's worth of fish washed up with nine feet of flood water. You know, and there was carp, but there was catfish, there was all sorts of stuff. But it's sad seeing them. They got trapped in here, and then they, they couldn't get out. What also got trapped are many tons of dirt that settled on his land. Bean has been shelling out big money to relevel his fields. So right here, you're talking $800,000. To me, 25% is out of my pocket. So that's 200. So I am not gaining. I mean, they're, they're seriously whacking me. Costly damages like these are why Bean is one of many landowners suing the Army Corps of Engineers for their management of the Missouri River. Farmers say changes the agency made in the early 2000s caused years of floods. Those policies came after the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service told the Corps that under the Endangered Species Act, they needed to better protect two birds and one fish. Enter the pallid sturgeon, long and lean, like a dinosaur met a swordfish. It's a very rare fish, and it lives at the bottom of a deep and very muddy river. It's very hard for us to actually just observe what this fish does. That's Dr. Robert Jacobson, chief of the U.S. Geological Survey's River Studies Branch. He says previous changes to the river made it easier for barges to travel, but experts suspect they also made life harder for baby pallid sturgeon. The dominant hypothesis is they're getting stuck in the main channel and being transported way downstream. They can't get off to the side of the channel when they need to start feeding. So they're starving instead of surviving. Over the last 20 years, the Corps has tried out several ideas to help pallid sturgeon like building more shallow water habitats. Dan Bulware, a lawyer in Kansas City, argues that's just one policy that created flood risk for farmers. He sued the Corps for hundreds of growers, including Michael Bean. Well, the two birds are now off the endangered species list, but when you compare the losses that have happened with the citizenry, it's a real disaster. That's why you have the Fifth Amendment that you can't take private property without compensation. A court of federal claims judge agreed with that take last December. She gave Bulwer two weeks to find more farmers who wanted payments for another lawsuit before the statute of limitations ran out. Now, many people never thought we would win this case, so they didn't join. Well, once that decision came out, people were coming out of the woodwork calling us. This second suit opens a new chapter in the showdown between business and environmental interests on the river. If it's successful, farmers from northern Nebraska down to Kansas City could pocket hundreds of millions in damages from the core. But would it actually change any policies? Bulware thinks the money doesn't matter. They have already tried to change the management of the river in some respects. But they can't with what they did because it's going to take years to take the river back to where it was. Plus, more research is needed to know if the Corps' first attempts at helping pallid sturgeon worked. Jacobson adds this fish is famously elusive and doesn't even reproduce for 12 to 18 years. It's a legitimate question. If you've done these changes to the channel, how do you know it's working? It's really hard to know how it's working. But there's been momentum in recent years to test theories more aggressively. Still... Answers won't come as soon as farmers like Michael Bean want them. I think they ought to get back to the basics and do what their job is. And I think they ought to be held accountable to people. And after 2011, we've heard all the excuses. And this is the once in 500 year flood. Really, eight years later, it happens again. That's not 500 years. That's eight. Bean says the settlement won't make up for all of his losses. But for many farmers, it's better than nothing. Christina Stella, Harvest Public Media. Harvest Public Media is a network of reporters and stations focusing on food systems and rural issues. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. We are a member-supported service of the University of Missouri, St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com.